This is an abridged campaign of the Stellaris Nemesis DLC. Abridged meaning we'll only be looking at the most important moments, which in Stellaris won't be that many, so this may be quite short. Here is my new species. We are a species with one thing in mind. We're going to do what the DLC calls become the Crisis. We're going to ruin everything in this galaxy we're creating here, which is what the new DLC supposedly allows you to do. For the settings for this game, I slapped it on default and then enabled Iron Man mode because I don't have achievements in this game, it's time to finally get them by playing vanilla. For the other settings, I put the difficulty up by 1, the galaxy size up by 1, and also doubled the hyperlane density, combined with making it a spiral arm galaxy. The idea behind all that was to make a galaxy that was more suitable to being conquered and generally having constant warfare with fewer choke points, although the spirals, the spiral arms, will have choke points between them. So essentially we're going to have a mix of areas that are really dense like the one we're seeing right here, and then gaps between the spiral arms with long, single choke points like you can see coming out of our home planet to the southwest. So, as the game begins, here we are, we're playing Stellaris. So what is this DLC? Well at first it's not very clear because nothing appears to have changed. What I initially thought this DLC was going to be when I heard about it was something that lets you play as, say, the Unbidden or the Scourge or something. One of these factions that in normal Stellaris shows up towards the end. I figured you'd start as them on like a different map or something and then the end game would be to come to the galaxy and destroy everything after doing something else. Unfortunately, my imagination about what the DLC is has once again caused me to become disappointed. In fact, it's very similar to normal Stellaris, as far as I can tell. So here we are, we're just going to start the game. The whole being a crisis faction thing won't come in until later. So we're going to be skipping through quite a lot of this early game because we're just making stuff, making planets, making ships and claiming systems. We are going to be playing things very close to the edge economically. We're going for maximum boom strats to steal as much territory as possible and this will involve abusing the market system to constantly rebalance the different resource stockpiles we have. Most of all, transferring a lot of our resources from the other stockpiles into alloys, because alloys let us claim more systems, and they let us build warships, and that's what we're going to need to be a crisis after all. And I was planning on doing some early aggression, so we're going to get a navy up and running, well, as soon as we have somebody to use it against, I should say. The process of acquiring such a victim has been changed in the new version of the game. I used to complain about the first contact being kind of weird, you just randomly make contact with someone and then nobody cares on either side of the agreement. It's a slightly bigger deal now, you have to go through this diplomatic process which can have these little events that determine to some extent how you'll view each other once first contact is done. It's actually somebody else who makes the first first contact, since the AI can make first contact with you if you don't do it to them. Here we have a chance to say hello to another very hostile looking faction, they're militaristic, they're xenophobic, they're basically just like us and that means we have to kill them. We are now though going to encounter another change in the new version of Stellaris, the intel system. So at first, we don't even know how big their territory is. We can tell they're next to us, but that's about it, because there's this new intel screen where you don't really know much about other factions until you've interacted with them quite a lot or until you've spied on them. So we have this intel bar here. I think it goes up if you do things like trading and just generally being next to each other. But you can use an envoy in order to speed up the process by actively spying on them. So the goal will be to find out things like what their fleet strength is or what their economic strength is to work out whether your faction can compete with theirs and if you're bigger than them you might as well declare war. In the past you would just know that right away, now there's a bit of a process and that makes a bit more sense I think since you're not really supposed to know everything about these aliens you're just meeting. But you can tell what my plan is, I'm spamming out corvettes, it's time to build up a navy and prepare for trouble. You can see we've got this great choke point here, there's another faction to our west, the guys I was talking to earlier. So we've got a choke point where three factions will have to fight over one region or one system to get at each other 
and I am going to be controlling that system soon enough so we can set up a star base there and just control this little crossroads between the factions. Pretty handy. Once I've got my fleet here, I had to decide whether to attack them and when to attack them. I'm not actually going to get the intel we need, I'm just going to guess that maybe we would win a classic strategy, but I was waiting to see if our little beetles could come up with some better ship technology before I did it. In the end, the decision was made for me, because the guys on the left, the light blue faction, just decided to declare war. They want to capture this nice choke point system of me. Well, there you go. We're already there. We're ready for this conflict, for sure. Let's do it. We don't have any claims on their territory, so we can't get anything out of the war ourselves. But we can not lose, which is always good. And things do get started right away, because their fleet immediately attacks the position they are claiming. But my fleet is here to fight them. We've just finished refitting our ships, in fact, right in time for the battle. The enemy have a little bit more number than us in Interstellaris. That's bad news but we do have some number in the nearby shipyard. The shipyard doesn't really seem to do damage proportionate to what its number is. I don't really know how it works. What the number really means is always a mystery. But what we can do is make new ships into the combat and just reinforce our side. And because this combat is going to last quite a long time due to both sides having terrible weaponry, we certainly have time to put more ships into our fleet as it fights and we do win the battle, but both sides lost roughly the same amount of corvettes there. It looks like we destroyed them all, but most of their corvettes will have jumped away and they'll come back later. So both sides have gained a whole bunch of war exhaustion there. A successful defense, but it doesn't really get us that far ahead in the war. We're certainly going to have to fight them again, but I did want to press some kind of advantage here. So I decided to move west and attack their border system. They also have a starbase, but because it's not defended by a fleet, we should be able to whittle them down. Again, the fact that their number's kind of high won't mean much because starbases don't really apply their power. I guess some of the number is just talking about the fact that they have high health compared to most stuff. So it will take us a very long time to capture that base. But if we do, We'll still have the enemy choke pointed off, so that will be a nice strategic position, and we do eventually get it. We can also repair the base and use it just like our own base, effectively meaning we're in the same position as before, but we have one of their systems occupied. We could even claim it during the war if we have enough influence, and get it as a prize for our defense. There's just one problem with this plan. While I was doing that, the enemy have been rebuilding their fleet, and it shows up right now. Plus, that fleet turns out to be quite powerful. They've probably grabbed a few techs as well. They're most likely ahead of us because they don't have that many ships, but their number is pretty decent in comparison to us. What we're going to do is run for it. We're probably going to get destroyed if we engage them. Our main hope is to sit at our own station where the station might help, and of course we can keep reinforcing. We're going to be saved here by the fact that the AI now has to spend a long time itself taking back its system. In fact, I think they kind of messed up here because they were sitting in their system without taking it back for a long time. I don't think they actually engaged the station I took for whatever reason. But while I was waiting for something to happen and rebuilding, well, something did happen, something bad. The other faction I was planning to attack originally, they declare war on me. They're just trying to humiliate me because they don't like me. Well, fine. We can try and get a few prizes from this war because I had already put claims on a couple of their systems since I wanted to invade them. But we're not going to be doing any invading anytime soon because now we're at war in both directions at that T-junction choke point. We really just have to sit there and hope the enemy don't kill us, especially at the same time. For the traditions, I've been spamming my way through expansion to help us with expanding. And now we'll go into Supremacy to get us some Supremacy. There you go, that's about the extent of my tactics. I don't know what the meta with Traditions is, and it may have even changed in the recent updates. But Expansion and Supremacy sounds like the name of the game for our Doom Beetles. I'm expanding into the final spiral arm of the galaxy on the edge. Because we're near the end of the arm, we know that to our north, 
there'll be nothing essentially, so we can start expanding around the edge quite freely there until we encounter someone. And it's really the same deal with our main arm where we started. It's a very dense area with plenty of hyperlanes thanks to me increasing the hyperlane count in the settings. But no factions appear to be near us on our arm, so we can expand out in both directions. We're going to have a pretty decent chance to build up a sizable empire if we spam all of our influence and alloys or as much as possible into building out in long lines down the systems to cut off any enemy access to stuff behind us, which we can do by then closing our borders to their science ships. In terms of our war, nothing happened, which is what I wanted to happen, so I suppose that's good. And our war with the light blue faction just goes away because they get bored of thinking about attacking us. That's perfect. Now we can go and attack the other faction who currently do control one of our systems beyond the choke point. At this stage, we have some number. We've built up the number to do this, so we go for it. They actually tried to leave the system, so we took it back, and then we fought with their fleet, which is better. We don't have to fight with the space station at the same time. And in this battle, well, we've got the number, as I said, so we wait for something good to happen. I actually still haven't upgraded my weapons, I seem to remember. All of the techs I got were the upgrades for the other stuff, like engines and armor. So our attack still sucks, but we've got enough number to win the battle. I wanted to go forwards and try to press some of our claims after this, but they've got another fleet waiting just across the border. It's roughly the same strength as ours. So I didn't feel like attacking it and ultimately just sat here. It's another status quo situation. Although that said, we can't get a status quo peace because the enemy are aware that they're stronger than us, so they certainly have more stuff hidden away. We'll be in trouble if they attack us. Fortunately, they haven't thought of that yet. So we can sit here and still try to pump out more ships to match them. They're probably not spending so many alloys building outposts and star bases, so that's why they should be able to throw more ships at me if they really try. I actually fell back from the front line when it looked like they were going to attack and conceded that territory once again. I really didn't want to fight them away from my starbase where we can gain a bit of an advantage, but they didn't come to attack us. Ages later, however, my fleet had been gradually built up to the point when it does have more number than theirs, so I did decide to attack and crucially, they didn't reinforce their frontline position after taking it. Therefore, we are able to grab this battle, where the lights are flashing, I think I still don't have the weapon upgrades because I seem to remember your lasers turn blue after the very first weapon upgrade, the enemy clearly have it. So we still suck for weaponry, but it's working out. The lesson though is, we shouldn't have actually been involved in either of these wars. If I'd been nice to these two factions and not fought these wars, I wouldn't have lost like a thousand alloys worth of ships by now. We could have more stuff elsewhere if we hadn't been killing each other in these wars. The only upside is that the enemy were losing about the same amount of economic stuff as we were. Now we win the battle, but we certainly don't win the war because immediately after the battle, I spot this large fleet on the other side of the hyperlane. They've still got loads more stuff. And again, if they had concentrated that stuff together, we would be in enormous trouble it's just sheer AI luck that they haven't done that. And we're actually able to get out of the war right now with the status quo peace, simply because they had really high war exhaustion. And because we just took back the territory they occupied, a status quo peace would mean that essentially nothing happened in the end. The peace takes a while to go through, so they're actually attacking me during the peace process. I'm trying to not fight them to preserve my ships, but the peace does go through before they attack. In fact, their ships appear to be going back. They didn't even want to attack me, but there we go. So the war is over, both our wars are over, and the end of our epic campaign brings only harm and despair to both us and our enemies. Well, I suppose that's a crisis-y thing to do as well. It was all a waste of time, but it could have gone a lot worse, especially if the AI realized that. They've been somewhat kind to me, and we're on track to still keep them at bay with that choke point, which I'm only going to make stronger over time. While we keep using up our expansion options, we've got plenty of stuff to do. We don't really need to conquer our neighbors. We can just make our own new planets elsewhere. And all the while, 
Our future enemies will be building up their planets, making them nice and juicy for when we take them. It's an investment, this peace process. That's how we'll sell it to our belligerent beetles. They'll get more war and better war later if we don't war now. They are sending us these diplomatic insults. This suggests the AI is still interested in attacking us. We've got our frontline fleet and our base ready and we'll keep it nice and upgraded. Since the war could start at any time with either of the factions, I could try to increase my relations with them. But I didn't, I seem to recall. I did increase my relations with the other faction up at the top left, who were also one of the nice, religious, peaceful factions who didn't look like they were going to attack us anyway, which of course will be their mistake when the time comes. We got pretty far down the outer arm of the spiral galaxy. Before I started going back with my expansion, I'd got so far and claimed so much territory behind my choke points, I thought we might as well start actually filling it in a little bit, especially because I do have contact negotiations going on with a faction that's somewhere on the outer arm to my south, so we probably can't go much further. Economy still in shambles a little bit as we sort things out. Doing loads of colonization at the same time, I think is the reason why the economy is difficult, because all of your new rubbish planets use more resources than they make for a while. And we're going to make up for that by just scrambling to sell things on the market board and try to get all of our money back. And this does work out in the end, it was perhaps just suboptimal, because selling things on the market board increases the price of everything and comes with markups, that sort of stuff. Now I finally realize what I'm supposed to do in order to kind of activate this Nemesis DLC when I spotted that there is an Ascension perk called Become the Crisis in that list there. So what we have to do is complete one more set of traditions, then I can click a thing that will officially turn me into a Crisis faction. We've also joined the Galactic Community and I'm going to support every new law that increases diplomatic weight from something. Because I plan to have the biggest military, biggest economy and most advanced tech, all the laws that give you extra weight will make me very influential later on if all goes to plan. You could say that my plan to become a crisis faction is going to ruin my diplomatic reputation, but actually it's not that bad as you'll find out later in this part. There was a little look at the extent of our empire now. As mentioned, we're up against other factions, so we can expand internally, but to really get ahead, we need to take a couple of border systems from somebody else, in particular ones that have planets in them. There was a chance to join a war with one of my neighbours here. I didn't join because I had my own plans. That is to attack these purple guys again. They're quite nice to attack because they have two planets really near our borders. That means it doesn't cost much influence for us to take those planets, and one of them is their home planet, which will be really developed as well. We just go for it then, and this war is going to be much better than the last time we fought these guys. For a simple reason, since we last fought them, they haven't done anything with their military. It's still the same power as it was decades back in the game, whereas our navy is now like five or six times more powerful in that it has a bigger number attached to it. So not sure what the AI were up to, but they weren't building ships or upgrading the ships apparently. That means we can plow on in, immediately take down one of their fleets and a powerful station as well, both at the same time. It's annoying to fight them both actually because your ships get divided between shooting at the station and shooting at the enemy fleets, which reduces your damage efficiency, just focusing down the fleet would probably be better. Doesn't matter too much in this case, we grab that border system and break on through into their space. They had another fleet in the next system and another powerful space station defending their capital. But with a number on our side, we don't really have to do anything, we just go near them and kill them. Still not killing them particularly fast, I suspect I'm still lacking weapons upgrades, need to get more on that physics tech tree. But all is good, and we go on to fight a third time against another fleet, and it dawns on me that if they had taken all of their ships and put them together in a blob, which is what I've done, they might have been able to stop us. So perhaps we didn't actually have that much of an advantage overall. It's just that their fleets were spread out over three or four different areas. For no reason, I don't think there's any strategic advantage to spreading your fleets out just in your interior space. 
So that's all good, we throw some jars of insects on their planets to capture them, we can easily outnumber the defenders because I've just spammed loads of transport ships, that's fine. And with that we're going to occupy the part of their space that I wanted. I was considering claiming some more space since it was going so well. But in the middle of me considering this, they surrender and the war ends. So we take the stuff I had already claimed, including their home planet, and another colony as well. That's going to cripple their faction. Their economy will be out the window with the loss of their home planet, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. Although we do have an issue on their home planet here, because it's got loads of unemployment, but also loads of empty jobs to problems that could solve each other, and I had a suspicion as to why we had this issue, and indeed it's because our species is xenophobic, they've automatically enslaved a new species that's come under our control. That's going to be an issue, we're going to have to have a talk with our bugs about how slavery is bad for the economy sometimes, so we need to give these guys residence rights, we can't make them citizens because we hate them too much, but we can make them half citizens. This will let them work in things that aren't like slave tier labour jobs. We'll work them until they die, maybe we can please the bugs with rhetoric like that. So we need to sort out stability here, the place doesn't really like being part of our new evil empire. I'm not quite sure how to deal with stability other than just trying to make the planet look vaguely tidy and happy. I was delighted to find you can rename planets, so we don't have to go with these boring names that the AI has given its planets. We can continue giving the rest of the galaxy messages. Messages they're not going to be picking up on, but well, that's their problem. We had some bad news come in immediately after the war. A bunch of claims get made, so somebody is planning to attack us. I immediately suspected it was these guys up at the top here. Actually, it's the guys on the right. This is inconvenient because this section we've colonized over here is really far away from all of our core areas. It will take in-game years for us to send military units to this front. With that in mind, I switched to cooperative diplomatic stance. This makes your neighbours hate you less. I think we were in the one that gives you plus 100 border friction, essentially making your neighbours get angry with you all the time. So now we're going to be nice to our neighbours until we don't need to be. That's the plan. We've got loads of research projects to finish up, anomalies to research, empty systems to build up, loads of planets still that I can colonise, and an economy to fix as we prepare to become the crisis, which as mentioned, just is a matter of time. We have to get a bunch of traditions which will just trickle in over time. Skipping now to like half an hour later, we've got some political developments. Our peace treaty with these purple guys has expired. They were also for a while guaranteed by another faction, meaning I'd have to fight somebody else if I wanted to invade them. But that guarantee was randomly revoked, and that's very interesting news. So now I'm thinking about going to attack them again to finish them off. Still, their main stuff is close to me, making them a really easy invasion target. We can take all of the good stuff with just a small invasion that only requires a little bit of influence to pull off. But before that invasion goes ahead, I actually finish getting the next tradition tree. So it's time to become the crisis and enter the Nemesis DLC properly. We click on this thing. Let's see what it does. The first thing it does, and really the main thing it does, is it gives us loads of free Cassus Bellies. They come in two flavours, one is a vassalization one and the other is an extermination one. The vassalization one is effectively the same Cassus Belly you can already get for free by just demanding somebody be your vassal, they'll refuse and you get the vassalization Cassus Belly. So it's kind of like nothing, although you can use it on factions that are equal in strength to you, which I don't think you can do with the normal vassalization justification. And the other one, just kill them. Well, I suppose that's very crisis-like. But the thing about having an extermination Cassus Belly is that's not very good for us economically. We're once again having to explain to our bugs that if we go in there and kill them all, they won't contribute to our economy and we need that to kill other people. So it's all about that future killing investment. In this case, I can't vassalize the purple people. I think it's because I have a claim on their only remaining planet and you're not allowed to vassalize territory you have territorial claims to, for whatever reason. That means we're going to have to invade them normally, 
and invade them normally I do, so here's a straight up not crisis themed war. We're just going in to kill their tiny fleet, they certainly couldn't rebuild after we took them downtown last time. It looks like they focus on putting defense platforms on their star bases, which won't really help them. We quickly wipe them out. The war comes to a swift end after like one minute of actual gameplay, but it doesn't end quite as I thought because we took their planet. This causes all of their territory to be disbanded and go back to being controlled by nobody. I had hoped it would end up being controlled by me. It being controlled by no one is annoying because now we have to expend a bunch of influence to get it and more importantly, somebody else is going to be expending influence to get it from the other side. There's another faction down there so they can expand up and claim some of the territory that could have been reserved for me if I was more careful. This starts a sort of race. Ideally, we want to get down to the two choke points at the end of this blob. Those guys on the other side are actually the number two faction right now. We're the number one faction. I had actually expected some resistance though to me declaring my intention to be the crisis and intention to kill everybody, I guess. We can see on the contact screen that we aren't well liked, a few factions seem to like us, but I think we're not well liked just for being xenophobic and being very different in terms of our civics to the other factions. Feels like we're not getting any respect for our crisis declaration. Guys, I really am going to kill you. Well, once it's economically viable for me to kill you, it's too beneficial for me to leave you alive, but I'm going to enslave you for a bit. That's going to be annoying. And you'll probably die later when we can just replace all of the pops with our delicious beetles or something. I don't know. It feels like we need to stir this galaxy up a bit and create some more material consequences for our crisis. I soon found a use for our new Casus Belli. I'm going to use it to start a war with those guys from earlier who started claiming some of my territory. So now we're in a vassalization war with them. But there is a twist here. Where I border their faction, it's actually a little bit of a cut-off section. It looks like the Hive has also attacked them and cut off part of their territory. So we can invade a bit of these guys, but not most of them. That will mean we can't really press this war goal. I'm essentially going for some sort of status quo resolution where we take the bit that's near us. There's my efforts to claim as much territory as I could out of that block that appeared. Unfortunately, the Hive did get some of it. Here's a little battle with the forces of whoever these guys are that we're fighting now. I don't have that many ships here and it's mainly because my fleet is split twice. It's split between being here and being over at our old battlefront. And this particular fleet is split between being at the top and bottom of this section to claim multiple parts at once. That was still enough though, even a quarter of our strength will deal with them. Until it doesn't, the twist is that before I finish occupying this area, they do come back with a bunch more ships. What I wanted to do is quickly grab a status quo resolution before they started reconquering everything here. A missile in flight, we can get a piece right now and maybe it won't hit. Actually, that's not how the piece works anymore. It takes a while to go through. But we can't take status quo piece at the moment because I forgot to take this place at the very top. And if that place was left out, that would be very artistically poor, and we can't have this. Our crisis needs to be as beautiful as it is devastating. Therefore, we are going to engage in battle with their more powerful fleet. By this point, though, i would united my local fleets together and just built up loads of stuff, gone over our fleet limit using a nearby shipyard to make our number bigger specifically for this engagement. So we can go in, take some losses, it won't really matter too much. They're still going to lose more due to our number superiority. The balance bar there is kind of even. Someone explained the balance of power is like your hull strength or something rather than your offensive strength. I can't quite remember what it is. But actually we had an advantage. We won that naval battle and while the enemy fleet wasn't here for a bit after that, we finish capturing this blob. Now we can go for the piece. Still nowhere near getting the actual piece that we went for initially with the Casus Belli. But grabbing status quo resolves things okay. It just creates a small vassal for us, so their faction was split into two versions of the same faction. Some of it will be our vassal, the rest will carry on. We'll have to get them later, but before then we need to go through this hive faction, so they'll be next on the list I suppose, especially with us having a land grab race with us on another front. They would be our next natural enemy. And while I was looking at them, 
I discovered a new feature that's been added. I'm not sure if this is part of the DLC, it might just be part of a patch. But you can, as part of the spying stuff, do specific things in this semi-hidden menu behind the diplomacy screen. Well, I think I did do some information gathering here, but I didn't come back to this screen after doing this. I'm not quite sure why I need to use that. I suppose I'm in the boat where I'd rather just defeat them. I'm not that interested in doing espionage against other factions or trying to steal their tech or something. I'll just go in and vassalize them or something. That seems easier to me. You have to pay money to do this and you have to micromanage it. So that was that. We're going to gather some intel on the hive before we attack them. But we don't necessarily need it. I suspected that my military is going to be better than theirs because we've been focusing on military from the beginning and we have the most resources. While building up that military, I was able to genetically modify our beetles and this is particularly useful. We had the repugnant trait which is reducing amenities on every planet which reduces happiness which reduces resource growth. So by turning our beetles into sexy beetles the economy will be strengthened and I believe that principle can be applied to real life as well. In politics news, we've become the head of the Galactic Council. This is another new feature I think, as well as the Galactic Community, like the Parliament. There's now a subsection of this, the Council, which only has the most powerful factions in it and that includes us as the leader. So they're really not taking our whole we're the crisis thing very seriously, are they? We're actually now the head of the galaxy's official government. I think they just completely ignored us when we said we're going to kill them all. Or maybe they're up for this. They want to see what we're going to do with it. So here we are. Our intelligence gathering has revealed that their fleet is worse than mine. That's what I wanted to see. They've got the same economy and same tech level. They just haven't built as many ships. So they probably could stop us if they really tried and really focused on military construction. Well, turns out they haven't. I was going to attack them either way, but good to know they probably can't stop us. So we start the war. The war goal is vassalization, so we're just going to absorb them as a vassal. Well, actually absorb them later once you get the integrate vassal thing, but we'll talk about that much later. We also have to go to war with the guys behind them because they were allied. I'd actually prepared for this though. We've got a wormhole at the back of our territory that goes to the back of their territory and they have a fleet ready to jump over there and do something about that. Therefore, we'll have one fleet fighting the allied faction that doesn't matter so much. Everything else will converge on the main hive space. Because we have more number, we don't really have to do anything, we'll just move through their space and take it. And we need to take quite a lot of it in order to get a vassalization goal to go through, so it will take a while. There was a cheeky move though. They had this fleet that appeared out of another faction's territory to attack this little pocket over here where I had a very small fleet just claiming territories for me. So they're actually going to be able to get this advantageous space battle. Inconvenient, it's too short for us to do an emergency jump and escape and we happened to jump into the system right on top of them so we couldn't escape them with sub-light drives either. That was annoying, I'll just send a fleet with a much bigger number to go back and deal with what is probably their main force. Everybody else is going to be doing the classic cat and mouse where we can easily defeat the enemy in any engagement. It's just a matter of hunting them down because every time you kill them, they'll jump out of the system, respawn somewhere, start reclaiming some territory or something, it's super annoying and you can eventually kill them if you click enough times. Here is the war being over. We've taken tons of systems, blown up a bunch of fleets and captured loads of planets as well so we can make the hive our vassal. As for their allies, we've just killed all of their fleets off screen somewhere. So once the truce after this war goes away, we can attack them as well and also vassalize them. We've got the wormhole so we can do it at any time. This is the stage in the campaign where we have the number. We can vassalize anyone that I can be bothered to go and attack. It takes a while to do it and you have to click a lot, so sometimes I really can't be bothered. We cut now to sometime later. I'm sitting on my new border thanks to my hive vassals, where we've got some business to finish off. If you recall, we were at war with this green faction a while back, but we couldn't finish the war because we didn't have any access to their territory, so we made that little vassal from them instead. Now we're going to vassalize the rest. We can actually see that they barely have anything in space, so taking them is going to be extremely easy. 
we just have to wait for it to happen. There is actually a downside to them having no fleet, it's hard to build up their war exhaustion by killing those fleets, so it would be harder to get a peace deal through. In this case, the war is ended by default because we occupied all of their systems, they had no fleets left. It seems we just get an automatic win, we don't have to go and try to get the war score up, which is very nice. So boom, we vassalized them pretty easily, we didn't really have to do anything, that's another vassal in my pocket. For my collection, I can just have more of the galaxy under my sway. Well, let's do it to somebody else now. This is the faction we killed in the previous war, or the one before the previous war, the allies of the hive. I know I can take them, so I'm just going to do it right now. Although there is one minor catch, since then they have allies to another faction, these guys over here. So we're also at war with them. We don't have any intel on what's going on, we can't even see where their space is for the most part. This actually stops us from just rampaging in because we don't know where all the hyperlanes are yet. In the base game, or the old game I should say, you would have been able to see that in advance, so they've certainly added something here. Well, we'll just plow on in with a ship anyway, a fleet of ships I should say, and do something about all that. Here's the decisive battle with this Holy Theocracy faction. One of our fleets can easily outnumber their number, and that's going to be that. But it will now be a fly swatting contest as their tiny survivor fleets go around constantly recapturing things and taking dead star, star bases that haven't been repaired after previous fights, that kind of stuff. Well, it can be done, you just have to click on a lot of things. I'd really like to see automation of occupying an area and the same thing for sending in transports to take all of the planets in an area, just sort of paint a brush and say take that, a bit like in Hearts of Iron 4. Since there's not really much gameplay to it, but it is relatively high effort to actually go through and do it. Eventually the war comes to an end. Looks like our vassals got some territory, and we got another vassal. We also killed this consciousness faction, another hive I think. And now that we know we can kill them, once our truce with them expires in 10 years or so, we'll kill them again. Looks like we're still going to be maintaining our position as head of the Galactic Council. Really nobody cares about what we're doing as far as I can tell. I remember having this as a criticism of the base game where the other factions didn't really mind if you were obviously starting to take over everything. And I thought that would be something they changed actually in the Nemesis DLC, because we've done the whole Become the Crisis thing, we've announced our intent. I figured there would be a coalition against us, but even at this late stage, when about half the galaxy has been vassalized and we completely overpower everybody, we're still ruling the galaxy de facto through the legislature and through having enough number to kill anybody who gets in our way, and they don't seem to care, not even so much as an insult or something. Although, all that said, that's partially because of a secret. I was at this stage in my gameplay really disappointed in this DLC for the fact that it barely exists. It's called downloadable content. There was no content in this product as far as I can tell. All it does is change a few things far less effective than say installing a mod which is free. They really didn't do anything, but they actually did do a bit more than we've seen so far. There's actually a whole crisis menu where you can do crisis-y stuff. I just haven't discovered it yet, and it was actually another couple of hours before I discovered it. I essentially just discovered it before recording this. So there is something, but there are some particular things you have to do to make it appear. I actually have already done most of them, it's really just limited to the fact I haven't opened up a hidden menu that makes it all happen after you've met all of these conditions. In the meantime, well, let's vassalize somebody else. The next faction down at the bottom of the galaxy is on the chopping block next. We can actually do an end containment war goal against them, because they are a purifier faction. They want to kill everybody, so in some ways they're a bit like us, only we actually don't kill people in order to preserve the economy. Maybe we'll purge them all later or something just to look a bit more crisis-y. Once more, the very slow process of actually taking their territory, I'm going to mercifully cut to the end when we just end the war on the technicality of the enemy not being able to resist anymore. Very handy. Another vassal added to our pile. They're not a very good vassal because they want to kill us, they'll probably rebel if that's even possible. But we can just integrate them at some point to get around that. 
immediately after I'm looking to the north thinking, well, we recently killed these guys, might as well go kill them again, they've got no allies, although I did hold off on that war declaration until my ships are in position to do it. Probably could have gotten away with just declaring it now and then going in to kill them later on. One thing was to grab the Evolutionary Mastery Ascension perk here. We're going to need that in order to absorb our big neighbouring faction, the Hive, without them dying, which is what usually happens to me. We can grab this perk, this unlocks a tech you can get, which then allows you to assimilate Hives instead of purging them, and get some pops, and as mentioned in the previous part, if we have the pops of the second biggest faction, we're going to be pretty much golden for the rest of the game. But then came the big moment of this campaign. I had just reloaded a save after going away, and what I tend to do when I come back to the campaign is to pause for a while and look through the menus, sort out economic stuff, just fiddle with things in the background that I don't talk about in this commentary. And while I was doing it this time, I discovered this. There's a whole menu about the crisis hidden away on the third tab of the traditions screen. So there actually was some content in this DLC content. You can see some things going on here. We might even have some mechanics to play with. We're currently a level one crisis according to this, and we're gaining menace points in order to level up our crisis level. You get various perks at each level, and the kind of plot, the reaction of the game to you becoming a crisis, which so far is non-existent, is apparently tied to this crisis level system. And that's where a catch comes into things. You can't actually progress through the crisis system if you haven't done the crisis special projects at each level. I've got millions of special projects, I'm just ignoring them all, including this one apparently, I didn't even realise it was here. We have to do this very short special project that I'm probably supposed to have already done at this stage, where it's kicking off a bit of a crisis plotline about us, us tapping into other dimensions for energy and such. We can do that now while we micro the war and get loads of perks for doing it. Perks we don't really need, but it's the content of the DLC and that's what I'm here to see. So it's finally time for a speed run of the Nemesis part of the Stellaris Nemesis campaign. Here we are having completed the first project, we're basically discovering this thing called the Shroud, another dimension full of energy, the sort of thing that tends to exist in Stellaris, and we're going to start utilising it for our own nefarious means. And every time you rank up it mentions here how powerful we're becoming, we're already pretty powerful, we're the biggest faction by all metrics and we have this big network of vassals we can leverage as well. Now we're just going to flaunt it a bit, I guess. What I thought probably should happen but doesn't is that you get sort of punished at each stage. So for example, becoming the crisis doesn't do anything. I thought maybe becoming crisis level 2 would like kick us out of the parliament or something. The other factions don't care very much as it turns out until the very late stage of this mechanic. So we'll just keep going. We're already crisis level 3, we just haven't done the gateway project to make the perks enable. There's a little look at the various things you can do to get menace points. Just having vassals gives you menace points, so we're actually going to gain them even if we don't do anything at this stage. Handy. Here's us completing the next special project, just tapping in some more to alternate energy dimensions. Still no particular use for them, but that's going to be coming later. One thing these level ups do actually provide you is a new set of ships. You get an alternate build pattern for ships, so as well as the cruiser, you have the menacing cruiser and the menacing destroyer, the menacing corvette. These are versions of each ship that have better attack but lower defense, but most interestingly you can build them using minerals instead of alloys. Normally you need an extra stage of industry to get alloys from minerals. This lets you build ships just from minerals, so you could spec out your economy to not worry about alloys quite so much. We don't really have that concern, we have an unlimited supply of everything, so it's just nice to have another option, and I think I did throw a few of them into my fleets just for fun. Here's the next special project going through, we're now tunnelling even more into another dimension, still nothing big happening, but we're starting to see what I presume is a reaction to me levelling up through the crisis system. One of the ancient empires is getting annoyed with us, we're essentially starting to see what I thought would happen 
way back when I first said, become the crisis, the other factions are noticing that we're being extremely belligerent. All they want to do here is humiliate us, I was like, well fine, you can humiliate me because the other option to resist them could lead to war, and we don't want to be at war with an ancient empire, since they would probably win until much later in the game when you can get the same technology as them. One thing I wanted to note, by the way, about this whole crisis system, is that this screen, this UI, is pretty good. This is just a reaction to me ranting about the UI in Rome Total War Remastered. Here's a UI with everything you need on the screen, it's all pretty big, it really gets you straight to the message of what's going on, where you're supposed to be going with this and how to do it, all at once, good stuff. Obviously the only problem is it's the third tab of a different menu, for no reason. Tab controls on the bottom of a menu rather than the top, well that's not a standard design practice, but much more importantly, this menu should just be a standalone menu, similar to something like the Galactic Parliament menu, or the Federation menu, or the Event Horizon menu that appears in the Gigastructural Engineering mod, where it's just a button on the screen, maybe with some visual aids to show you the progress you're currently making towards the next menace level without having to click on it. In fact, I would even go so far as to say, they should probably have kicked you out of the Galactic Parliament by now, so the button to look at your crisis stuff could just go there instead, maybe becoming the crisis automatically disconnects you from diplomatic links. I don't know, something to differentiate it a bit more, because so far, everything's the same, even up to this high level crisis, apart from the fact that the ancient empires don't like me. In this case, I actually have to give up on being allowed to enslave people or purge them in order to make this ancient empire be okay with our shenanigans. That's actually fine by me, because as already noted, we're not enslaving or purging, I'm keeping everybody alive for economic purposes. Later on, once we become so powerful that we don't have to do anything anyone says, we'll kill them all, so overall this does play into my plan, the ancient wisdom of those empires was unable to discern it by the looks of things. After a while, we win that war, because we capture everything so it ends on the old technicality, that skips the ending part, and we've got another vassal for our pile, gaining us more menace points as we menacingly do whatever it is we do to our vassals. I think we get some of their resources or something. And then a bit later, our integration of the hive goes through, and now it's time for the moment of truth. Will they all die from being disconnected from the hive? Well, they don't, we've actually done it this time, which is great because this adds like 50% to our population taking in all of the hive pops, since the hives tend to have absolutely loads of them. They're all now in this assimilation job. This does mean it's going to tank our economy because we've expanded our population by 50%, but all of those new pops won't produce anything. They're going to sit in assimilation mode for a while and they'll eventually just become normal pops and start taking up their old jobs. For now, we just have to support them. Well, that's fine, we have plenty of stuff to sell if we need to support the economy. I'm just happy this finally worked, normally they all just die and you're forced to purge them, which we can't do because that would be breaking our deal with the ancient empires, wouldn't it? Next up, well, let's invade the next person around the circle of the galaxy. I noted there that my recently acquired vassals, the Ravagers, really hate me. I don't know if your vassals can rebel, but you need to keep that in mind. Anyway, we'll pop off another vassalization war on the Tuxcan here. We're already set up on the border, ready to do it, so in we go. These guys have been left alone for a while, they actually have some ships and stuff, but what they don't have is enough number. They do have a couple of fleets of about this strength. So all together they might have been able to put up a decent fight, but I don't need to put my fleets together to fight them as it stands, so we can attack them in multiple locations. We vassalize the Tuxcan, and that's another one. We now have about two thirds of the galaxy either under our direct control or as our vassals, so we're really getting there, the remaining powers need to cotton on to what's happening here. We've almost maxed out our menace, which is what we're trying to do at the moment. Somebody dared to actually rebel over here, inconvenient. I thought, well, let's just have a zero tolerance policy for rebels, shall we? We'll use this extermination war goal we got given ages ago and haven't done anything with. 
We'll just kill the rebels off. This will damage the economy, but at this stage, doesn't really matter. I'm sure the Beatles just want to let loose and go for it. They don't have any ships, so there's not much to this war. We can also now use our Armageddon orbital bombardment stance, which you get with one of the crisis levels. This just allows us to kill them very quickly from orbit. Well, I say very quickly. It still takes a long time. I think it just prioritizes attacking the civilians more or something. In this case, I seem to remember I didn't actually bombard them to death because I had ordered some transport fleets to come here and take the planet and they took it while it was under bombardment. So we ended up not actually fulfilling our extermination war goal. Found it amusing that they are not interested in peace, even in this situation being nuked several times per second. They still think they can get out of this one. Well, fine. We'll see how that goes for them. Here is my plan to sort out all of the difficult civic issues going on in the hive space. We're going to make an enormous cosmic trash can, which we can do using the habitats technology. Then we'll fill it with residential areas and fill it with all of the unemployed people from the planet. So I'm not sure if this is the first time this idea has come up with. What we're going to do is concentrate the undesirables in a sort of camp. And the problem with this is that it's not as easy as I thought. In my previous campaign as the museum species, I was doing this to people all the time. But because we don't have the same civics with this setup, it costs me influence to move people into the trash. That means we can't just like put everybody we want in here, we need to be a little bit sparing. So I just picked the planets with the absolute worst unemployment and the biggest populations moved all of the unemployed people out into the trash, then the stability on those planets will be much higher, and the output of everybody left will go up. And then as for the trash, well who cares what happens here, they're going to be a bit angry with us, but if they rebel we can just kill them, otherwise they might actually do a little bit of work while they were there, so that's all fine. Next, it's time for a mini war against one of the other rebellions going on across our domain, because our vassals experienced loads of rebellions, like three or four new factions were formed down at the bottom of the galaxy. This is the only one I bothered to attack because I wasn't that interested. They're only taking like single systems, I just thought fine they can be independent. I'm too lazy to be the crisis at this stage, it's too inconvenient. However, at last, something does actually happen in the midst of this war. Everybody else has finally accepted my claims. They will admit that I am the crisis and they're going to do something about it. Well, it's about time. It's way too late, in fact. But yes, they have banded together and have declared us a crisis. This means we're always at war with every other faction from now on. So things will spice up all of a sudden, although only really because we're not ready for this. Our military strength is still very large in comparison to theirs, but we aren't in position to attack them. Well, except in one case where I was actually already stacking up to go up this edge of the galaxy here on the left. So I happen to have a fleet ready to go in and cause some trouble. It should be enough on its own to blow up a bunch of ships and take shipyards. So over here won't be so bad. And there's a little bit more to this. We've got some crisis-y stuff to do. We have to build this etherophasic engine or something. We have to build the space MacGuffin that will destroy the entire galaxy or save us and transport us somewhere else. Some combination of those two things, I believe. And to do that, we need a bunch of dark matter. Now you can normally get dark matter as a resource, but we need loads of it. So to aid us in that, it's also given us these two star eaters, these mysterious cubes that can convert stars into dark matter for us. So there's our new game objective. We need to take a bunch of stars and convert them to build this final megastructure. It's a megastructure with loads of stages. So you need like 100,000 dark matter to do all of it. This is going to take a while, but it is something to do, which we haven't had for most of the campaign, at least in terms of what the DLC has to offer. So here we go, let's have a look at what this actually does. Our cube ominously goes over the border to a neighboring system. As for the enemy forces in the area, well, they're just gone. While this crisis war was sprung on us, it was sprung on them as well. So the AI factions weren't really ready for this. 
All I need to do is put together a few ships and cheekily start taking border systems so we can immediately steal some stars off them. You can of course do this to your own stars, but I felt like it's probably more sensible to do it to their stars. And there's what happens, after a while your cube shoots a big laser, the star disappears, it blows up all of the planets in the system and generally renders it completely useless. But we got something like 1500 dark matter from that. Now all we need to do is work our way through this neighbouring empire. The only thing I wanted to say about all this is that while it's good and while we finally have some new crisis focused gameplay, this should have been what it was like from the beginning. This is now the end of the game of effectively completed Stellaris and then it adds this extra thing you can do on the end, which I'm fairly sure you can almost do anyway without the DLC, you can certainly do it anyway if you use mods. So this Stellaris Nemesis DLC it was effectively nothing, it's a bit of a con, especially because this DLC costs about half as much as the entire game. You would expect a massive influx of new content. No, it's essentially nothing, it's a little bit of a joke. I think they've gone completely off the rails with this one. Thanks for giving it to me for free by the way, Paradox, but that's about the amount that it's worth to me. This is not better than what the modders are doing from the professionals. You'd expect something more. Here's a case where blowing up a star takes out the last planet of a faction, or the only planet of this faction, I think it was a tiny rebel faction. But this is good. This is crisis-like, I think you'll agree. Blowing up stars, watching home planets filled with people just get turned to rocks. Now that's more like it and some delicious dark matter as payment helps as well. Looks like we've got loads more stars to blow up, the fact I'm on a large size galaxy means there are more stars than there are meant to be, so plenty of stuff to consume. They really can't stop me from blowing everything up, there goes another faction, and you might note that if you blow up a star system when there's another star, like a binary or a trinary, it just blows them all up at the same time. Inconvenient, we can't get extra dark matter for blowing up three stars or something like that. A shame. Well, we at least can have some fun by doing an experiment. I decided to blow up some territory that had been taken by one of my vassals. So this means we're effectively doing an act of war against somebody on our side in this war. However, it doesn't unvassalize them or start a war, anything like that. They just get a bit annoyed. Well, that's fine by me. So realistically, we could probably just blow up our side of the galaxy. We have two thirds of the galaxy under our vassals. We could very safely blow them up, not risk our death cubes on the front line. But I don't know, I guess it's more entertaining to blow up something else, even though this other stuff we're blowing up usually is ours by the time the cube gets there because we're capturing it as we advance. So technically we're still blowing up our own territories here. Soon we have completed the first stage of the magic thing, now we just have to pour in even more dark matter to start the next stage. I actually almost had enough, you needed like 30 grand and we had 29 grand. So we can go down to the local corner and find the dark matter dealer, we need it for a thing, don't ask what, you'll probably be fine. And there we go, now we have enough to start the next stage of the project. And by the way, when it comes to the economy, I'm not doing anything anymore, we've got to the point when I just can't be bothered to build things, you can see many of my resources are maxed out, my planets are full of crime and empty building slots and probably unemployment and overpopulation and what have you. But it doesn't matter, everybody's going to die soon anyway if this works out. Somehow that argument didn't convince some of my people to not rebel. So this stinking sewage can floating through space has decided to become its own faction. Well, as mentioned previously, we're doing zero tolerance for rebellion, so we send a fleet and put them on the Armageddon bombardment stance. Gradually the station will be blown up. Well, actually it won't be blown up, the population will disappear and the station will remain because that's how the game mechanic works there, a bit weird. Next, we get some news that something bad might be stirring on the other side of the galaxy. One of the ancient empires has woken up, so they'll start building ships and generally participating in the game. Which will be bad for us, because the ancient empires can take us down, their fleets are far more advanced than us and they have loads of them. We're kind of early in the Stellaris timeline for the end game to be happening, so our tech isn't as advanced as it might normally be when you'd be expected to fight the ancient empires. Meaning a battle with them would not be to our advantage, 
Fortunately, they just woke up but didn't do anything in particular yet. We are still progressing towards our objective, we've just reached the next stage of constructing the thing, needs tons of dark matter for the next stage, and there is a bit of a consequence, I think, to advancing through the construction of this thing. Our general tunneling into this other dimension has stirred the other dimension a bit, and a few of its inhabitants have come over to our side. So now we've got all of these enemy blobs around the place, and their fleet power is a skull. The only other time I've seen that is when a planet craft behemoth showed up in an earlier campaign of mine. So I was a bit worried that these things were just going to annihilate everything. In fact, I almost expected them to annihilate everything. In fact, they're very weak. That skull was lying. Their fleet power is about 5,000 roughly. So they're fine. We just kill them whenever we encounter them. I even spotted a random space station taking one of them down. I think it could be quite appropriate for as you're trying to blow up the star systems, these extra dimensional blobs just deny you loads of the galaxy to make it actually hard to find the stars and you have to be very careful about your movements. Something like that felt like it could be a mechanic there, but essentially nothing happened again. We just killed those things or left them alive when I couldn't be bothered to go and find them since they're not really doing anything. Here's the big news though. That awoken ancient empire does declare war on us, so this is trouble. Those fleets, every single one of them, can take down many of my fleets combined, thus we need to run away, in particular with all of these random civilian ships that are waiting at the front line from previous wars where I just forgot about them. So we'll get them out of the way. Here's one fleet that was advancing, they're going to have to turn back. We need something like 100,000 fleet power to contend against an ancient empire fleet. We can get that if we combine like four of our fleets together. We certainly have the ships to do it, but we need to play things very careful now. So with that in mind, I started collecting fleets together and pulling back for the most part. However, the enemy advanced faster than I expected. Here they are right up at the front line already. And that is because they're using wormholes and gateways that I really didn't take any notice of. But yes, there is a wormhole that probably allows them to go from that location right there to where they are now. Our death cube though is in trouble. It was not able to escape the enemy fleet which just went for it. It actually has quite a lot of fleet power but not in any meaningful way. It doesn't appear to be attacking the enemy as the battle goes on. There's a distraction. We have the chance to create another faction using the limbo event chain but we don't want to do that. We want there to be fewer factions if anything. We lose that battle then. However, we do also FTL jump away from it, and essentially all that's going to do is make the cube reappear back in our territory later. Well, I wanted it to be back in our territory later, so I suppose that's all fine, much better than it being destroyed. We continue forming up our fleet, and I think that same fleet that just took out the cube comes over to the east to start harassing us. There's another wormhole here, so they're probably jumping in and out of it from somewhere else. But by this point, we've got like five fleets on top of each other here. I'm ready to fight, so I give the order to just pursue them. At the very least, we want to capture this wormhole system and hold our side of it, and then find out where it goes for more information. But as it happens, we are able to get a battle in this system. And now we can just outnumber them with all of our stuff, so here's a decisive engagement, and effectively the decisive engagement of the war. Because if we can take down these guys, we can take down everybody. And we can take down those guys, so there's the proof of concept, and killing them will give us some access to their dark matter technology, which we can then use to further upgrade our ships, so it's only going to help us out more and more. There was another wave of those blobs that were supposedly stronger than the last wave that showed up. But again, we just sort of killed them incidentally, didn't really hunt them down, they're now all over the map. But they're mostly not really doing anything. The map's absolutely covered in red stuff, enemies everywhere, it's mostly just those blobs, otherwise it's lots of small, new fleets that the ancient empire has built. I noticed here though, one of them's really close to our core territories, and it's because there is a gateway or a wormhole in a little annex next to that other purple ancient empire that again I totally hadn't taken into consideration. That gives them a relatively short route to our core area that we do need to be aware of. As for the Dark Matter project, well, we've just started blowing up our own systems at this stage. There are lots of relatively safe locations for our cubes to operate, so I'm just setting up chains of stars to blow up inside our borders, and we'll try and defend those borders in the meantime. At the very least, it will take the enemy a while to come over here and stop me, 
And we are actually, little did I know, getting to the point when we've got all the dark matter that we need. The issue though is that these reclaimers are starting to claim quite a lot of our stuff as you can see here. One of their main fleets went up top, there's another wormhole up there. So they're now quite close to our thing. My main fleet is down here at our very old border station that we talked about a lot in the first part. It's frantically being upgraded with some of our newly discovered weapons tech to make it more powerful. This is a bit of a gamble, I probably should move it to the core system or the home system and then upgrade it. But it turned out fine in the end, we get there before any enemies show up. And here comes the latest upgrade and in fact the final upgrade of the thing. We can even make it faster by spending some living metal on this living metal mega construction edict that shaves a year or two off the construction time. We were lucky because the enemies in this area, once they took a bunch of our stuff on the right hand side of the screen, they didn't really progress over to the left side which is where all the key stuff was located. So our economy is still intact despite losing tons of our territory and their ships didn't prove too much of a bother. In a nice twist, they appear to be blowing up planets using one of their own super weapons. So I suppose they wanted to blow everything up. Well, I don't know. They're causing a nuisance, but they're just blowing up the Tuxcan, one of my vassals. We have so many vassals padding our stuff that if they're going to come around the galaxy directly blowing up systems, they will never make it in time. So then, as we stare at this disgusting map covered in random colourful shapes, we get this message. We finally finish building the thing and it hints that this is going to unleash all kinds of chaos on the galaxy but that maybe we'll be slipping through to another dimension to escape this chaos and it asks me to press the big button well okay we press it and everybody dies i guess that's what we wanted i had actually thought that maybe at the end there was a sliver of hope when it was talking about going through into another dimension that there'd be like an end game after this where you'd go somewhere else and be on a different map fighting the blobs or what have you there was a sort of mention that maybe this was going somewhere but ultimately this is the end of the campaign we delete all the factions the scoreboard is updated to take everybody off it the galaxy is now just black holes everything has been converted into black holes you can actually continue the campaign as you can see and we can keep playing, so here we are, this is the end game of the Nemesis DLC, you can just look at it. The stars quite nicely wait for you to come and see them explode. There's our home system, turning into a black hole, the machine is gone, blowing up all of our stuff, and our poor planets are being annihilated too. Still not quite sure if the beetles managed to escape into the other dimension or not, maybe they just killed themselves as part of their furious rampage. And that's the end of this campaign. Everybody died. Cool. Good work. Bugs. You did it. It does feel like a bit of an anticlimactic or even like a neutral ending because I don't really know what we wanted. I suppose we got it but it feels like we haven't got anything because we also lost everything by definition as part of what we got. Well I don't know. The campaign's over. The main thing you get for completing the campaign is an achievement, so that's the entire purpose of this. I have the achievement for completing it via the Nemesis ending, the big red button or something it was called. Good news there, the elections are still coming up for the Galactic Council. I wonder who's going to win that one. There is potential, I'm not quite sure if this happens, but if we leave it until the game reaches the official sort of end game date of around 2500, that maybe like a normal crisis would also appear. I presume that if any faction goes down the be the crisis route, that the regular crisis factions don't spawn but it would be good if the unbidden showed up or something and were disappointed by the lack of things to do here well it happens to all of us unbidden i'll see y'all next time <laughs>